Now and again, if he's been a good boy, Roy is allowed to leave Kent. Today we're on an excursion to Hertfordshire. It's freezing and this was filmed a few weeks ago, but at least it's dry. He's a guest of William Aldis, who runs a sporting agency for stalkers and falconers. Roy first met him whilst flying his Goldie. Thank you very much for in, uh, inviting us down today. Obviously, I came and had a look with you earlier on in the season when we were flying the birds here. Yeah. And uh, we were after a few uh, a few hares, but we yeah. did notice that you've got a hell of a population of muntjac. Yeah, there's a fantastic population of muntjac here. There's been very little management of the numbers for the last 10 years before I took over the sporting on this estate. So. Lots of lovely big bucks and also some uh, large quantity of cull animals as well that we've got to deal with. Um, so. How many of you, or, you know, have you, uh, you've been quite successful since you well, we start. Well, we started um, in January really getting to grips with the, uh, the cull animals because up until then we were doing a lot of the falconry work. So um, we've been averaging six to nine a week um, since the beginning of January and it's uh, been a relatively easy uh, time getting easy all of going. the deer. <laughs> The hope is we're going to get a nice buck today. It's all looking promising as we walk through the grounds with a mixture of open rides, conifer and broadleaf woodland. William describes his stalking as cheap, fun and within easy reach of London. Once we find a decent vantage point, we stop to see if anything decides to pop out for a bit of a browse. I mean, obviously Munchak feed pretty much all day long, but uh, around here they, they've, they've really taken to laying up in these wood, in these woodlands here and uh, moving out over the grassland. Just at the last, uh, just last, the last knockings. Um, the amount we see when we're out lamping foxes is just it's staggering. Great. Yeah. Obviously you can't do anything about them at that point in the day, but... Uh, it's, I mean, it's fantastic, it's it's, fantastic it's, territory for them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, absolutely stuffed. Yeah. As we watch and wait, we experience four seasons in one day and draw a blank. But a barn owl keeps us entertained as we lie in wait a little further along. Then we spot a buck. The cover means Roy can't get a clean shot. He tries to call, but no response. With the light and our options dwindling, Will suggests that Roy takes a cull doe if the opportunity arises. It does, but this first one won't stand still. Another crosses from the other direction. This time Roy knocks her down. Food for the larder, but no trophy for the wall. We couldn't have left that any later. I mean, uh, that was right at last knockings. The light's pretty much gone on us. Luckily, she uh, fell on the spot at the shot, so we didn't have to follow her up, because trying to follow up in this light, in this thick cover, would have just been an absolute nightmare. So. Uh, she bowled straight over, and with uh, with optics on there that uh, that weren't quite as good, I very much doubt we would have had the opportunity to uh, get the shot because it was literally, yeah, light fading, last five minutes, and that's very often when it happens. So uh, yeah, very very exciting stuff. I really really do enjoy Munchak stalking. Fast forward a few weeks, and the Chuckle Brothers are both let out of Kent. We're going for round two with the Munchak, and what we've decided to do today, because David does seem to be somewhat of a Jonah when it comes to Munchak is we've ditched that cameraman and we've actually changed to one of the stars of Field Sports Channel who's agreed to come out and film for me today. So if we just spin the camera around and you should see that we have got Andy, young... A Andy Crow. <laughs> is it? I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to do this so I don't have a double chin. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? There you go, look yeah, at that. Look at that. Um, it, isn't it scary when you look at yourself in a camera? Especially me. Um, it's not often I look at myself in a camera like this and you I've did. got my clothes on. <laughs> That'll come out in the edit. <laughs> or maybe not. The weather has improved dramatically and the deer are out to play. We're not retracing our steps but working through the top woods. Will knows he has three big bucks and Roy has been offered one of them. A younger animal shows itself and Will suggests he takes it as part of the cull plan. Yeah. 
it drops on the spot. A doe doesn't seem to be bothered that a 243 has just gone off 100 yards away. Roy still hopes that the big boy may show himself, but he is happy with the second stalk and his new crew. In a difference when you get weather like that, absolutely super. Considerably better than last time. <laughs> <laughs> Not freezing. That's where well, you can't blame the deer from the last time, Kenny. That was just horrid. I, I quite frankly wanted to be uh, over <laughs> somewhere in front of the else. Fire. <laughs> but no, that was super. Nice. Thank you very much. Thanks again for having us. Much appreciated. I've been really impressed with Mark today. I think he's definitely. I mean, he's got fantastic artistic flair, isn't he? Yeah, ma massive and uh, lots more energy running around like a loser. Yeah, I mean, I mean, David just looked like a sad potato. <laughs> potato. OK, Mark's on the case. Let's just see how he smoothly zooms out. Very smooth, Mr Gilchrist. And finally focuses on this passing doe. Well done, Mark. You're hired. But it's probably best if you don't work with Roy again. It's rolling. Just get okay. on with it.